Today we're going to finish up where we started last year. It took us a year to get here, but here we are. So we're going to prune these vines after a year's growth. Okay, so that's our goal is to take them from where they were two budded last year to where they're up on the trellis this year. Before we get started, I'd like to explain a couple of things. Number one is the kind of pruners I like to use, and you may be familiar with them, you may not, but let's talk about them for just a moment. First of all, we have this type of pruner. It's an anvil pruner, and if you look at it closely, you can see where that blade hits a metal surface every time you prune. That is one thing going against it, it dulls your blade quickly, and also it will smash the wood and not cut as cleanly. And when I say cut as cleanly, I'm referring to this next pair of pruners. And that's a bypass pruner where the blade bypasses the cutting edge like that. It makes a cleaner cut and the blade stays sharper longer. Also, if you'll notice about this pair of pruners, it's got a slight bend to it. When you hold your hand up to prune, instead of doing this, you can hold it more naturally and fatigue your wrist less during the course of the pruning job. Okay, so that's pruners. The other thing I'd like to mention before we get started is a little bit about grapevine physiology. And that has to do with the bud system. The buds are all important because that's where the shoots grow and consequently bear fruit. So a vine will continue to grow as you can see this one did over the course of last season. But it does not form a terminal bud. An apple tree, peach tree, plum, or cherry, whatever, forms a terminal bud and ceases growth. The grapevine will continue to grow as, it, as you give it water and fertilizer. Then as cold weather sets in, if the wood is not big enough or mature enough, it simply dies. And so it sloughs off at each one of these bud junctures, each one of those nodes. You can see where that wood is getting a little bit stronger as we get into thicker wood until we get to about a number two pencil size in diameter. And at that point, we can cut it and leave this terminal bud to produce our growth for next year. Okay, so ultimately in this system, we want two trunks and a kicker cane. Here, we two budded this vine. In other words, this two, two year wood was cut right here. It had one bud left that we grew up into this nice cane that will become a trunk. So two year wood has peeling bark. One year wood is slick like this, non-peeling bark. And so that's what we did last year. And we did it on both sides, one here and one here that formed these two trunks. The center one is that kicker cane again that we brought up through the trellis, but this year we cut it back and it will leave two buds that can grow a cane and they can come up and produce a cane that can be a replacement for either one of these trunks or cordons. Now these two are the canes or trunks that we're after. And they've done really well during the, the 2019 growing season. So we, what we want is to establish cordons and actually put this vine in its box. In other words, the space we've allotted to it within our training system. In this case, it's a vertically shoot positioned vine with the cordon wire here and the shoots will grow vertically. Okay, so we, we have the cordon in place, which is this one year old cane that will develop over time into a cordon. So we need to know where to cut it. We do that by looking at the diameter of the wood and where it fits in the box. So halfway to its neighbor is right about here. And this is a good looking bud for a couple reasons. The wood has the proper girth, it has good brown color, and the bud is also oriented upwards. Good deal. So we're gonna cut it right here. Simple enough. On the other side, we'll repeat the process, even though it's somewhat complicated by the post. But again, come halfway to its neighbor, the diameter of wood is correct, the bud is oriented upward, and we're going to cut it right here. What that allows is some extra wood past the bud that can be susceptible to freezing without freezing the bud. Let's talk just a moment about the, the bud anatomy and physiology. Grapes are pretty smart, if you will, in that each bud has three growing points, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary, and they're all encapsulated in this bud structure. What you're looking at here is a dormant bud with a leaf scar beneath it. That's where the leaf was attached last season. And right here was a lateral. And so that's a lateral that forms and grows in the current season, typically not kept, nor is it fruitful. But this bud is dormant now. It was formed last season, and it will produce a cane on which you'll have your fruit next year. Know this, if you get first growth, 
and it gets frozen, you have a second chance because the secondary can then pop and it can grow. It's maybe not as fruitful as the primary, but you do have a second chance. So within the bud diagram, we can see three growing points. The primary is larger and it's going to be the one that you're after because it will be the most fruitful. The secondary is smaller and the tertiary, of course, is smaller once again. Typically, the tertiary, if it does grow, only produces vegetation and will not be fruitful. The primary will have the most fruit. So there we have it. We have a two-trunked, cordon wire, vertically shoot positioned vine ready to go. And so these buds then will each produce a shoot on which we'll have one or two clusters of fruit. And this will be its third year of growth or third leaf.